Sturm Tiger cross section. When tanks are designed, a number of factors are considered before the ideas on the drawing board eventually roll off the production line. Factors such as top speed, armor, fuel efficiency, ease of production, as well as strategic and tactical considerations are all taken into account before they join frontline service. Sometimes, however, designers do away with such ideas as subtlety and opt for raw power. To this end, German engineers created the Sturmtiger, an immense vehicle that saw combat in the later portions of the war, from the chaos of the Warsaw Uprising to the last gasp of the Third Reich in the Ardennes and Remagen, and signaled a final throw of the dice for the Wehrmacht. Origins The Sturmpanzer VI Ausf E, also known as the Sturmtiger, has its beginnings in 1942. At that time, the Wehrmacht had already made use of the Sturmpanzer IV Brumbar, which was a Panzer IV that had the turret and main gun replaced by a 15cm howitzer. The Brumbar was an effective vehicle, though in 1942 the German army became bogged down in heavy urban fighting in places such as Stalingrad, and it was obvious that something more substantial was required. The German high command envisioned a large, heavily armored vehicle that could withstand whatever could be thrown at it from the confines of urban environment and dish out enough firepower of its own to simply level any opposition. The Panzer IV hull was too small for what was expected, and so designers made use of the much larger Tiger I tank hull. When fitted with armor and weapons, the Sturm Tiger was truly a gargantuan creation. Dimensions The Sturm Tiger weighed in at 65 tons, a full 8 tons larger than the Tiger it was based on, making it one of the heaviest track vehicles to participate in the war. It was a little under 21 feet in length, 12 feet wide, and 9.5 feet in height. The main gun was short, and due to its size and positioning added very little to the overall length of the vehicle. The armor of the Sturm Tiger measured in at 6 inches at the front and was sloped at 47 degrees, giving it extra protection. The armor was thinner at the sides and rear, measuring in at 3 and a quarter inches, and the roof was just under 2 inches thick. The Sturm Tiger's armor was designed for urban fighting, where close range threats could appear from any direction. The thick, sloped armor could shrug off most of what could be thrown at it. Are you prepared to relive history's most epic battles, commanding a vast array of forces in India? Intense real time strategy action, including the mighty Sturm Tiger. Welcome to Men of War 2, the new era of the highly acclaimed RTS franchise. Choose your side the Soviets, the Americans, or the Third Reich. With each offering unique gameplay, it's time for you to immerse yourself in not one, but three narrative campaigns, two historical campaigns, and six bonus missions. Rise victorious in brutal battles from the snowy Soviet hills to the war torn ruins of Western European cities, all available in single player and co-op. For a different type of challenge, test your strategic abilities in raid and conquest mode, something to truly test your mettle. These are dynamic and randomly generated, so no two playthroughs will ever be the same. The battlefield has never been more accurate. Buildings crumble, guns run out of ammo, vehicles are left dry of fuel, and every decision can turn the tide of war. Use the environment to your advantage, or watch your enemies use it against you. And with full mod support, you and the community can customize your gameplay, adding a ton of replayability. Following extensive public playtests last year, the team at Bestway has dedicated additional development time to integrating feedback from their valued community. Bug fixes, enhanced audio-visual elements, technical refinements, and overall game balancing. You're gonna love it. Now, prepare to jump into Men of War 2 and lead your faction to victory in this deep strategic war game. Let's do this. Armament the Sturm Tiger, which translates to Assault Tiger, was designed to simply flatten any opposition. To accomplish this, the original design featured a 210mm howitzer, though there weren't enough of these weapons available at the time. Instead, the Army turned to the Navy for help. The Kriegsmarine made use of a large depth charge thrower, designed to launch explosives at enemy submarines. After some modifications, the Army adopted the Raketenwerfer 61, an enormous artillery piece. Measuring in with a diameter of 380 
millimeters or 15 inches, the shell was propelled by a rocket motor, which meant that the barrel could be short, a little over 60 inches in length, without sacrificing range or accuracy. The Sturm Tiger didn't have a turret, and the main gun was mounted on a fixed casemate. The shell itself came in two variants, the 4581 high explosive round for destroying quote-unquote massed living targets, and it had a 275-pound explosive charge. The other version was a 4592 shaped hollow charge that could reportedly punch through around 8 feet of reinforced concrete. Both shell types weighed in at over 760 pounds, and each had a range of up to 6,500 yards. A special crane at the rear of the vehicle was needed to rearm the Sturm Tiger, and could only carry 14 rounds including one already in the gun and another on the loading tray. The immense pressure generated by the initial powder charge and the rocket required the gun to have ventilation tubes welded to the barrel to vent gases off and prevent damage to the barrel. In addition to the main gun, the Sturm Tiger also had a 100mm mine launcher located at the rear of the vehicle, which could turn 360 degrees, launching anti-personnel mines. There was also a mounted MG-34 machine gun, which fired the 7.9 2 by 57 mm Mauser cartridge, located at the front of the vehicle. Engine and Performance The Sturm Tiger was propelled by a Maybach HL230 P45 V12 water-cooled gasoline engine with a 690 horsepower output. Even with such a powerful engine, the sheer size of the vehicle made its top speed around 25 miles per hour on roads and even terrain. It had a fuel capacity of 140 gallons and had a total operational range of about 75 miles, though this could vary greatly based on conditions. Crew and Interior the Sturm Tiger had a crew of five. The driver, who was positioned at the front left of the hull, the radio operator, who also manned the MG-34 machine gun at the front right, the commander, who was also the gunner, and two loaders, both of whom were necessary to handle the immense shells that the Sturm Tiger fired. The interior of the Sturm Tiger may seem spacious at first glance, but due to the position of the loading tray, as well as the considerable space taken up by the shells, the compartment was cramped, and the crew was forced to shuffle around in the claustrophobic environment. Production In October 1943, the first prototype Sturm Tiger was presented to Adolf Hitler, who approved of the design and the production was set to begin. However, by this point in the war, the Germans were on the defensive and Tiger hulls were desperately needed to produce conventional tanks, and none could be spared for the nascent assault gun. As a result, by Hitler's personal order, only hulls of disabled tanks undergoing overhaul would be used for the program, and it wasn't until February 1944 that the first Sturm Tigers went into production. Due to these limitations, German industry could not produce large numbers of Sturm Tigers, and only 19 were built before production halted in January 1945. Combat Service the Sturm Tiger entered service in 1944 and were organized into three companies. The Panzer Sturmmesser Companion, or Armored Assault Mortar Companies, 1000, 1001, and 1002. These were originally designated to consist of 14 vehicles, though due to their limited numbers, only had four each, divided into two two-vehicle platoons. The first time the Sturm Tiger entered combat was during the Warsaw Uprising, where Company 1000 was deployed with two vehicles and the prototype. Incidentally, this was the only time the Sturm Tiger was used in its intended role as an urban warfare platform, when it was used to bombard the city. Though the Sturm Tiger was developed as a result of heavy fighting in urban areas on the Eastern Front, the majority of action the vehicle saw was on the Western Front. Sturm Tigers were used during the Ardennes Offensive, also known as the Battle of the Bulge, the last major German offensive of the war. When that stalled out, the Germans were forced to fight defensively, and the Sturm Tigers and their considerable firepower were used to stem the tide of the Western Allies' advance. Seven Sturm Tigers were used at the battle for the bridge over the Remagen, where they achieved limited success. They were initially intended to bombard the bridge itself, though they proved far too inaccurate for this role. There are some indications that a group of Sherman tanks were put out of action by a hit from the enormous 380mm shell of a Sturm Tiger during this action, representing the only tank versus tank kills the Sturm Tiger achieved though this is difficult to confirm with any certainty. They also played a role in the Battle of Reichwald in February and March of 1945, where they helped to stall the Allied advance and cover the German retreat. Legacy 
Overall, the Sturm Tiger had a limited effect on the war, given the small numbers that were produced. Most of the vehicles were captured by the advancing allies and destroyed. Of the 19 that were produced, only two survived in the present day. One at the Deutsches Panzermuseum in Munster, Germany. The other located at the Kubinka Tank Museum in Russia. A third was brought to Britain after the war, where it was used for testing, before being scrapped. The main gun, however, was saved and is currently located at the Bovington Tank Museum in England. Overall, the Sturm Tiger played a very limited role in the war, being produced too late and in far too few number to make any significant impact. In spite of this, it's a tangible representation of the many oversized armored vehicles employed by the Wehrmacht during the Second World War.